G'day folks, it's Cortezarino, and today we are doing a tour of my castle base. And originally there wasn't even going to be a castle base time lapse, so I just decided to create that castle you can see all the way up the back because I wanted to wanted a Japanese castle tutorial that was much easier to build than my huge Osaka castle. But uh, yeah, once I designed that, I just, I couldn't stop. I kept going. So we'll start right here at the entrance. You can see we've got a very simple but effective looking bridge. I quite like the look of that and it was super easy to build. Uh, what was not easy to build was this moat though. This took me six hours in creative, just punching away at blocks. People always say, why don't you learn to use world edit so it'd be a lot quicker? Well, uh, I can use world edit a tiny bit, but for my time lapses, I always like to do it all by hand because I think it looks a lot nicer. So yeah, it looks pretty cool out here. We've got all these cool lanterns along the side of the wall, but let's get inside. So we've just got a very simple gatehouse here. It's just for the guards to sit in there. You can get up these little up these little pillars. We've got ladders here, but there is not a lot to see. You can look out here and shoot arrows, but that is that's about it. But uh, yeah, I think the first thing I built was over here. So what I did is uh, we've just got few flower beds, a few trees. This is the way I like to do landscaping with lots and lots of overgrown stuff. So we've got bushes all the way around. And then we've got a lovely little koi pond. And I actually have a tutorial for this one. So I'll link that down in the video description. If you want to build this, it's a chunk build. It's all in a 16 by 16 area. And then just on the edges, I've just added all these other little decorations. So we've got a little water spring here supplying the water to our fountain. And the only thing I think I did differently to the, tu the tutorial is this bridge. The bridge in the tutorial is one block taller and made of acacia wood, but I just thought the spruce wood looked a lot better in uh, in this sort of scenery with, uh, with all the block palette I'm using. And then along the edge here, just between the castle wall and the embankment, uh, it's just, just grass along here, a few lights hidden under carpets. I haven't spawn-proofed this entire base, but you quite easily could, just with the, the lights under the green carpets. And then, yeah, just a few trees up the back. But let's head back around to the other side so you can come in the entrance and we've got a huge pathed area here. I've tried to make the paths as wide as I could because people would be walking all over the place here. So we've got a really cool looking tree there. The, it's not really my design. I looked at a photo of a, a tree that someone else had built and tried to copy it. So I, I don't know who built the other tree, but that's my version of it. And we've got a very simple little pond here. And then we've got my samurai statue. So he's got a horned helmet on his knee and a katana in his hand. And once again, I have a tutorial for this statue, so I will link that below as well. And yeah, just a few flowers around the side of our embankment here. And because it's a base, you need some crops. I've got carrots, potato, wheat and beetroot growing here. We've got our water sources in the middle with a little light source in there as well. Makes it a little bit annoying when you're trying to plant crops and you keep opening the trap door, but whatever. And then just around here, we've got a few pine trees. And once again, it's just all grass around here between the, the side of the castle and the wall. So the first house I built in the time lapse is this one over here. And this is actually... Uh, me stealing a design that I've already done. It's one I've got a tutorial for. I'll link that as well. But this one is quite a bit different. If you put it side by side, you will notice I've made a lot of changes. They're different heights and different widths. But uh, I just adjusted it to go with the, the block palette that I've used in the rest of the build. But if you have built that other one that I designed, you will notice that inside here I actually didn't bother changing anything in the interior. It's all the same as my other tutorial. But I think this floor is different. So you can just come up here and we've got a little bedroom. So let's go check out some of the other builds we've got around here. So we can come up the embankment. A lot of Japanese castles, 
Like they have the many have the big moat and the castle wall, but a lot of them have multiple lines of defenses. So embankments like this, so you can stand up here and defend. So up here we've just got once again a great big sort of path area because people would be walking everywhere. And we've got the barracks for all the uh, all the enlisted men to live. And this is a very, very simple house. I haven't gone to tons of detail on this one. I just wanted to do it in the same theme as the castle so it matched all the other buildings around here. And just enough detail that if you poked your head in through the window you could see furniture. But yeah, on the inside there isn't actually a ton of work. It's It's quite plain. You can see the roof up here. I haven't done a... A proper ceiling or anything but uh, yeah you can come in through the doors here and we've just got the beds for all, all our soldiers they've got their chest to put their little goodies in it's a very very simple room and then we've got the big table for them all to have their meals and just two spare chairs in the corner so we've got the same amount of chairs as we have soldiers because they wouldn't really fit at that table there and uh, and yeah, that's about all up here. So just around here, we've just got a few trees, a few bushes, and then mostly grass around here. Even though I do prefer to do really overgrown greenery when I'm doing my landscaping, I figured up near the castle, you would have very nice manicured lawns. And over to our other building here. Once again, it's very similar to the other one. Not tons of detail in it, just enough to make it look like it fits in with all the other buildings. And it doesn't really have a purpose. I've nicknamed it the uh, the cook's house. So this would maybe be where a bunch of servants live and uh, prepare the, the meals for the soldiers over there. So when we come in, we've got this really cool contraption. See, I'm working on another time lapse at the moment with some traditional Japanese houses, and they had this sort of setup for cooking. So you had your fire pit in the floor, and then this sort of contraption hanging from chains, and your big cauldron, and I think it looks awesome. So I've used this in the castle as well. So yeah, this is where you'd prepare all the meals. I've done a funny little table here. In the floor, just to make the low table, I've gone down half a slab. We've got our cushions in there, and yeah, I think it looks quite nice. But once again, very simple little house. You can come in here, and we've just got a bed and a little study area. And all these buildings in here, I'll do tutorials for all of these. They are completely spawn-proof, not just on the inside, but even up above. You can't get any mobs spawning on the ceiling. And this is how I like to hide a lot of my lights when I do a spruce floor, just with spruce trapdoors and lights below. So yeah, I wasn't going to do tutorials for all of this. I'd, uh, I was just going to do a tutorial for the castle, but so many people love this base that, yeah, I will do a tutorial for it. But for a lot of it, I won't say, okay, put this bush here and this bush here. I'll just show you, hey, I've got a bush and some flowers there. Do what you want, you know, so otherwise... The, uh, the tutorial would go on for absolutely forever. But if you stay tuned to the channel, you will get tutorials for all of this. And they those tutorials will include this castle. Now, I specifically designed this to be easy to build. It's not too big. And there are little things like this first floor here. It is exactly the same on all four sides. So just stuff like that makes it much, much easier to build for a tutorial. Uh, so down the bottom here, we've got some little arrow holes for the soldiers to sit in and shoot down on anyone attacking. And there isn't actually a room in there. It's, uh, it's just all blank space. I'll show you that when we get on the inside. So let's go to the inside. So we've got this first little building here. And this is just our little entrance. And if we come in the front doors... You can see it's just a little guard post here, so the guard will sit down there. He's got his samurai sword sitting there, and a bunch of things for sharpening his weapon. So he stops any uninvited guests from getting in. Now it's really cool here, I've done the end rod and the chain design. I actually designed this setup probably about a year ago before chains could actually go sideways, and uh, I just did it all with end rods. And uh, now I've seen as soon as you can put the chain sideways, a bunch of people are putting out this design, but I don't know, I think Cortez might have been the first one to invent it. 
Okay, before we go upstairs there, we're going to punch a little hole in the wall so you can see this blank area. Now, I could have fit another room in here, and when you do the uh, tutorial, if you're building the entire thing, you could put something in here if you wanted, but I decided just to leave it nice and blank. It's a bit of redstone access for the storage system, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you that, so there's plenty of extra room to build extra things. And we won't go upstairs just yet, we will go downstairs. So we've got this little entrance here, takes us in to the storage room, because this is a base as well. So this is a massive storage room, guys. We've got Nembon's big item sort of there behind that. So I'll leave a link to, he doesn't do tutorials, he just shows it to you and then gives the world download. But I'll leave a link to his video so if you want to build the exact same storage system in there, you can. It's completely automatic. And over here, we've just got a little doorway into a bulk storage room. So this is all manually. You put your stuff away yourself. And if we keep going, this is an area underneath the, the raised embankment that is completely empty. I didn't put anything in here, but it is completely up to you for a big base. You could put tons of stuff in here. And we've also got an entrance on the other side. So what I'd probably do is dig down two blocks to give yourself a bit more headroom. Put in a villager trading hall and uh, some farms, some animal pens. You could do whatever you wanted. Maybe a great big super smelter in here. There is plenty of room. So it's a very simple design for a storage room, but I do, I do think it looks quite nice. And if you want to put redstone contraptions in the roof, you could definitely do that. There's plenty of space. And I've just used plain stone on the wall back here. I think if I mixed up the block palette there, it would just look a little bit too busy. But anyway, let's head up here. So we're into the castle now. And what I might do is, because it gets a bit dark in the shaders, I'll turn them off and we'll have a look around in the normal textures. And up here is mostly decorative. I do have things like in this corner, we've got our big enchanting room here. So there are a few features you can use in here, but for the most part, it is just a, a decorative build in the castle. So the entire thing is all nice and lit up. I've hidden lots of lights underneath carpets and stuff like that. So over here, once again, we've got our big cook pot in the corner. So you can prepare your meals. It's the same one I used downstairs. And I've also got a little chimney sort of thing above it. And round here, we've got a dining room table and another samurai sword. Nice little lantern. And we can come around the corner. Here's the staircase for the next level. But in here, we've just got a small bedroom. So this might be for, for kids or something like that. It's not the master bedroom. But uh, yeah, you don't have to walk too far if you need a bed. So I've furnished this entire room in, in my style of having big, wide, open spaces inside. I really don't like bases where everything's so cramped and you're constantly running into stuff. So there is always plenty of room in my bases. And yeah, hopefully completely spawn proof and no mobs will be running in your windows. So let's head up to the next level. And this is sort of the living quarters for the Lord of the Castle. So we've just got a little lounging area over here. We've got a brewing setup so you can keep all your brewing supplies in here and yeah, nothing automated, it's just your single little brewing stand. And we've got a nice little table here. A bedroom sort of out in the open, but I was running out of room by this stage. And then just on the other side, we've got a little tea room here. So another brewing stand, a little table for enjoying your tea. And once again, I'm using the Wither Skeleton Skull as the black Japanese teapot. And then we can head up to the very top level. So we've got some lights hidden behind all these trapdoors here. And then up the top, there is no furniture in this one. It's just access to the, the great big balcony out here. So yeah, we've got a lovely little view. So if I can find a way out, there we go. And this is what the very top of the castle looks like. So nice and simple. It's a lot easier to build than my big Osaka castle. 
So that tour did not take very long at all. This thing is, is actually, apart from the moat, it is very easy to build in survival. Oh, actually, I should say apart from the trees as well. They get a little bit tricky to do. But uh, yeah, guys, I will have tutorials coming for all of this. I'll do the castle separately if you just want to build the castle. But uh, yeah, I'll also do a tutorial for this entire base. And just between you and me, if I was going to build this in my base, I would probably make it a bit bigger than this. So there's no reason why you have to have it the same size that I have. You could have the moat out all the way around here and just give yourself much more space and add in tons more buildings. These Japanese castle complexes always had a lot of buildings in them. So, you know, you can, you can do whatever you like. So thanks for watching guys. I know it's a very short video today, but you know, the base isn't really that big. I, I went for beauty rather than size. And you know, whenever I make any of these bases, they are always bases that I would enjoy living in myself. So it is definitely Cortezarino approved. And I've got a big announcement. I have started a Patreon page, guys. I've been leaving off I would have started one about a year ago, but with the way things are in the world, I, I didn't feel right about it. So I've left it for a long, long time, but we've started it up now. And pretty soon I will put in the join button on my YouTube page as well. If you want to join up and if you become a patron, what I'm doing is all the world downloads for absolutely everything I build will be available to my patrons, as well as a bit of extra behind the scenes content and other little goodies. So if uh, if that's something you want to do, supporting the channel, then uh, please, please go ahead. It is uh, greatly appreciated. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Cortezarino, and I will see you later.